It's been fantastic. Honestly, everyone has been so friendly here. I, I, like I said, I need to come back. I need to come yeah. back. Yeah. Woo! Would you guys like him to come back? Yeah. What are you guys going to say? No. <laughs> They can turn on you very quickly. <laughs> uh, the people have spoken. The people have spoken. Uh, you know, I uh, and of course we have a microphone right there, guys, so you can hop up in line, get ready with your questions. Um, but I have just a couple to start with. Uh, I'm I'm such a a big fan of the film Glory, and uh, thank you. And I know that you are. You're like a real history buff, and you're also a, a, a person, an actor, that really researches roles and really gets into it. Was there any pressure for you going into that kind of movie, that kind of script, because it has such significance, it has such historic significance, where, was there pressure for you stepping into that role? I actually don't feel pressure when I uh, get off a, a part or, or, or a script to read, because uh, especially if it's historical in value. History was the only subject I was any good at in school, and I think that's why. <laughs> no, really, because uh, for, I, I, for me, it was uh, sitting there and listening to, to teachers tell me stories, you know? And, uh, and reading books and getting into it, and, and, and so when I was offered glory, I met with the screenwriter, a wonderful guy called Kevin Jarre, who's sadly no longer with us, and he is the uh, stepson, or he was the stepson of Maurice Jarre, who you may or may not know, composed the music for Lawrence of Arabia. And so he grew up uh, in a household that was filled with history as well. So when we met, we had an, a, a kinship instantly, because I grew up in a household filled with history, and he grew up in a household filled with history. And so we hit it off right away. And, um, and he said to me, oh, you've got to go to the, the Horton Mifflin, Mifflin Library in, in Boston, because there you'll find all of uh, 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 Colonel Shaw's letters that he wrote home. I think he wrote home like twice a day or something like that. And so they're all there in the archives. And uh, so I flew to Boston and uh, they were, I called the library. They were very sweet. They said, yes, of course, Mr. Rose, come on down, which was very nice of them. And uh, they gave me white gloves. And I sat uh, for two days reading all these letters. And it was fantastic to really sit there and just soak up the history of the real experience that, that uh, Shaw had with the 54th. And I had no idea about the, the, the Massachusetts 54th Regiment before. And so when I met Kevin, I'm like, how did you find the story? He goes, that's what I love to do, is find stories that nobody knows about and write about them. So uh, it was a, a thrill. And we had a fabulous cast, boy. I mean, you know, uh, Denzel, and Morgan, and Matthew. And we shot it in Georgia. Most of it was in Georgia. Some of it in Paris Island, some of it in North Carolina. So we were uh, moving around a bit. It was hard only because we were in thick Civil War, uh, you know, wool outfits in the summer in, in, in Georgia, and I don't recommend that. We had all these wonderful reenactors too that we hired, and these guys are great. Are there any reenactors here today? There you go, a couple. God bless you guys. So if you ever meet a reenactor, they're fabulous folks. These guys are real historians because they live history and they get decked out in full Civil War uniforms and their wives get decked out in period costumes and they go and live uh, on the set. Like if we were, we picked a field to pretend to be Gettysburg and they went and lived. They didn't want hotel rooms. They all bivouacked in little tents, <laughs> and, you know, and these guys you know, would have cookouts at night and they all had period, if they wanted to wear glasses, they had period glasses. And so one night I went down there and hung out with them all, and they would take out photographs of their family that were period photographs. So they were really into it, which was so much fun, you know, to be around folks who were as dedicated as we were. So yeah, it was a thrill. I mean, they are method actors. They're totally method actors. Yeah, totally. they all went out Brooks in England. You know, he was as popular there as he is here. And uh, I, I had seen all of his movies, you know, uh, uh, at least 10 or 12 times. Uh, and that's how much I loved his work. Um, I always, I'm like that with, with people's work that I love. I make sure I don't see their films once. I have to see them over and over again. Like a good, like a good song, right? That you play until you're sick of it. That's how I am with movies. So I have to download them in my brain and then I can move on. So I, 
basically learned, nearly memorized every line from Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein and producers and everything. And so I was sitting at home one day, and the phone rang, and I picked it up and it said, Hi, this is Kerry Owens. He said, yes. He went, this is Mel Brooks. And I went, yeah, right. And I hung up on him. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, you know, I thought for sure someone was putting me on, you know? And the phone rang again, I went, come on. He goes, no, it's me, it's me, don't hang up, don't hang up. And it was, really was him. And he had seen Princess Bride and he said, I think you'd make a great Robin Hood. And I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely flabbergasted. And he invited me down to the studio to come and meet him. And we sat down. We, I, I said to him as I walked, and I said, dude, you, you had me at hello. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and then we cast Dave Chappelle together. That was fun. Yes. <laughs> what a piece of luck that was, right? And uh, yeah, it was a laugh a minute. I mean, Mel. It was, every day was just pure joy. He's all about the joy of filmmaking. For him, the journey of comedy, it has to be a joyful set, and it has to be fun, or else he doesn't want to do it. And so, and I think you can see that in the film. There's a, there's a level of, of joy among the actors that, that, that he, it starts with the director, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very generous spirit. Uh, I always set, tell folks he would give you the shirt off his back, be enough for 10 people, and he'd give, he'd give it to you. That's just who he was. And he always had a smile on his face, even though he was in terrible pain because of his back. And um, the most memorable thing I get, there were many memorable days with him, but the, probably the most memorable was the first day working with him. We were shooting the scene, um, we're, we're about to uh, uh, storm the castle, yeah? Uh, and we were built this fake set to look like a parapet, and the three of us, myself, Mandy, and him, are on the wall, and I'm, I'm mostly dead, so I'm passed out, and I think Fezzik has the first line, he says, um, I wonder how long before it takes effect. And uh, Man uh, uh, Montoya says, your, your guess is as good as mine, and then I come to and I say, uh, I'll beat you both together, or I'll fight you both apart, something like that. You guys know the line, don't you? <laughs> and Fezzik says, I guess not very long about the magic, uh, the miracle pill. Well, he didn't get to the word long. He let out the most monumental fart. I can't. Remember. Oh my God! No, 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 no! We've all accused each other of giant farts. This was a giant fart. Yeah. It was so monumental. I can't. Even, all of us still have tinnitus. <laughs> and, and, and you know the scene in the film where he goes, "Everybody move!" and everybody's in shock. That's what happened. <laughs> and, and the whole set shook. <laughs> Somebody timed it. It was 16 seconds. <laughs> Long time. I looked up at the sound guy and he lifted the headset off his ears to protect his eardrum. And then I made the mistake of looking at, at Andre and he, he, <laughs> he had a smile on his face that I told you already. But now he had this beatific smile on his face, and he was rocking back and forth like he was letting go of something he'd been holding on to for far too long. And, and you could hear this, I mean, it was absolutely monumental. What's so great in England is that the British are very weird about farts and things like that. They all don't know how to deal with it. Like, if somebody farts, they're like, oh, looks like a storm coming in. They all get very weird, you know? But after this, Earthquake, right? It, it was stone silence for like three burrows away. No birds, nothing. I swear to God, nothing. Absolutely. I'm sure there were birds in the tree going, what? It was monumental. And stunned silence, and Rob Reiner, the director, broke the silence. He goes, hey, Andre, you okay? I swear to God. And Andre, without missing a beat, goes, I am now boss. <laughs> First day. First day with honor. Crazy.